Well, friends, the day is finally here. It's crazy. It's been um, it's been hectic, to be honest. Lots of packing, lots of rearranging, cleaning. But we're all loaded up. We're all packed into the car and the caravan for the first inaugural trip to our new home. We've got about a five hour drive and we're just really happy, anxious. Um, levels have gone down today, so it's now level three, which means that we're allowed to move from uh, our temporary accommodation to our permanent home. So let's go. Are you ready? Are you excited, bud? Huh? You ready? That is quite a stoic face of yours, little Lanka. <laughs> little worried. Probably. Little worried. Little worried. So, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm feeling like I can take this off now, probably, because the sun is shining. And I just had some ginger chews. You need them for New Zealand road trips, or at least I do, because I get sick every time. And we're ready. Sun's shining. Sun is shining, and we're finally on our way. Wow. And as you can see, the caravan, it's got house plants, which we've packed up. It's got a little guitar, it's got a surfboard, but it also has all the rest of the uh, essentials for moving and our tools and all that stuff. So we're off, let's go. We just arrived, and these guys are here. Well, hello! It seems as if the house comes with sheep. Very New Zealand. I never thought in a million years my life would turn out like this. That I'd meet someone whose personality and essence fit mine like a glove. And then uproot our lives in California in search of greener pastures in my father's home country of New Zealand. And yet, here we are. After thousands of kilometers driven on both the North and South Island, hundreds of listings and open houses, and over nine months of searching, we found it the place for us to call home. When we first saw this property in person, all we had to do was look out the back patio and up the lush valley of rolling hills to know this was the place. There was an energy that drew us in and we both looked at each other and whispered, this is it. Come. They say the third time's a charm. We put in offers on two other places and didn't get either of them. And then we Good found this boy. place. Looking back on it now, I truly believe it was meant to work out like that. As I write out this dialogue, my fingers are caked in paint and plaster, my back is sore, and my feet hurt from standing all day. And yet, I couldn't be happier. But alas, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's been so much that's happened in this first week in our homestead that it's hard to comprehend. In the following video, I'll do my best to explain. Good morning, friends. It's day one at our new property. And it's a beautiful morning. The sun's just cresting the hill. This is surreal. I really am just speechless. Slept in the caravan last night, and I think we'll be sleeping in the caravan for a while. We've got cleaners coming today. We're gonna deep clean the property. And then this whole week we just have a lot of tasks to take care of, but I'm just so stoked. So incredibly grateful and just it's surreal. It really doesn't feel real. Um, we got a lot of work to do here, but we're just 
so happy, so excited to get to it and just turn this place into our dream home. Forever home. So, there are a pair of ducks in our pond. Lanka left his teddy on my bed. Good morning, bud. This is what the realtor gave us. <laughs> and it's now Lanky's. Go get it, boy. We've got our little outdoor table built. And that's where we slept last night. Got a little fire going to warm up the house. This is all temporary, of course. <laughs> Actually, it feels quite permanent. Yeah, we'll just keep it like this. I like it. <laughs> Who needs a regular bed? We'll just sleep on the caravan mattresses in the living room. Okay, so wow. Um, this is really the first time I've vlogged anything uh, since moving here. And we're on day two of being in this house. We literally, the only furniture that we have here right now is this table, with boxes everywhere. We're still very much in the process of moving in. The plan was to paint the house, so we've been spackling. And then um, we met our neighbor, who is a sheep farmer, and we were talking about the fact it's it's springtime here, so it's lambing season. So there's lots of little lambs everywhere across the country, and they're super cute. And just kind of threw out there, like, oh yeah, well if you have any extra lambs, like, you know, let us know. And cooking dinner, next thing you know, our neighbor's employee drives up and on her ATV with these. Two twin orphaned lambs. And we never said that we were like, we were like, oh, you have like one lamb. No, we got two twins, so we got a handful, but we're not complaining. It's kind of that feeling that you're like, I'm in, but you're also like absolutely terrified. I'm in over my head, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and they're by the fire now, and you know, Hopefully they're okay because she said that she didn't know if they would fully make it because she doesn't know the last time they ate because their mom essentially must have had them a couple days ago and when they found the mom, she was on her side and couldn't get up. They said that the mom passed. It seems as if maybe they haven't been fed in a couple days or ever. So they're really weak. But we just gave them milk. Blanca's just sniffing. He's actually being quite good. He's just being really good. A little bit worried. Oh, you know, just hi, getting ready for bed. Okay. We're eating. <laughs> We've got twin baby rams. Um, I don't know how this is gonna end up, but this is just welcome, welcome to the new chapter. Welcome. So, in other news, we've got a lot to do with the house, which we'll bring you up to speed on later in this video. Um, but for now, we're going to be feeding, bottle feeding these two baby rams. Welcome to New Zealand. I wish I could say that everything worked out perfectly, but that's not the way life works. About an hour after filming that last clip, one of the lambs fell asleep and didn't wake up. It passed away. And under the stars, in the moonlight, I dug a grave in our orchard, said some words, and laid 
it to rest. It was a visceral reminder of the transience and uncertainty of life and a poignant lesson in making the most of the time that's given to us. First steps. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the family. Okay, well, it's um, day three, maybe day four in the house, and we've got some sample paints. We've primed the wall, and now we're just putting these sample colors on to see which ones we like best. We got seven different types of, essentially different shades of white, because we want to have the interior of the house a nice, warm, inviting white color. And these are the final two, the finalists here. One is called Eighth Spanish White, and the other is called Quarter Pearl Lusta. So we'll see. I'm just going to put some thick coats on so we can really get an idea of what these look like. Obviously, we're going to be using rollers when we apply, um, but we couldn't pick those up because they weren't available. Um, but they're going to be available today and we're picking them up so we'll have all of our painting supplies. We just need to figure out which one of the paints we want and go from there. Okay, comment section, your turn. Tell me which of these you like better. Eighth Spanish White or Quarter Pearl Lusta? Let me know down there in the comment section. So one of the first things that I'm doing before we paint is I'm filling all of the holes in the drywall with putty and then I'm also sealing all of the cracks along the edges between the ceiling and the wall. So it's kind of you know, slow and time consuming work. There's probably a tool that's perfect for this but I don't have it. And I found that uh, just using my fingers, I'm able to fill in the gaps and then later I'll come back through here. We'll sand everything and then we will do a layer of primer, paint, and then we can come in and actually paint this room. So this is the third bedroom in the house. It's the smallest bedroom. And I just figured it's the perfect place to get started because we can kind of seal it off from the rest of the house so the whole house won't stink like paint. Um, and it's just like a small and manageable first room to work on. So yeah, I'm just in here listening to music, keeping the vibes good and just making my way with putty, spackling the walls and filling the cracks. I got a feeling we're going to go through a lot of this um, crack filler just because there's a lot of crack and as we all know 
crack kills. So I got a great tip from a local Kiwi character. Um, he's an old farmer, contractor, his name is Tony, and he told me there's three important things in life, the three most important things, especially when you're working uh, on a house. Number one, a good ladder. Didn't have that, had to buy one, got a good ladder now. Number two, a good wheelbarrow. Didn't have that, got one, it's making a huge difference. And number three, a good wife. And luckily, I uh, also have that. So I've got all the tools that I need. Now it's time to just get to work. Prepped all the walls, we filled all the holes with putty and plaster, filled all the cracks, and now we are going to do the first coat of primer. So recently just bought this big extendable ladder um, and that's because there's a lot of tasks around the house that need a ladder. The most pressing one is uh, one that we just handled today. Essentially all the water in our home comes from rainwater collection. And that system is just through the gutters, okay? So it rains, the rain comes down the roof, into the gutters, and then down this series of tubes and over to these two large cisterns, these tanks, these water tanks, okay? Right now on the house, the only gutters that are actually actively collecting water are the ones on the house. And it started raining really hard this morning, really hard. And we noticed that a lot of the water was coming up and over the, uh, the gutter instead of down through the tubes and into the water tanks. And the summers here can get kind of dry, so it's worthwhile taking advantage of the rain and making sure that we're harvesting as much rain water as possible. So we got the ladder out today. I got up there, uh, I have a little scoop, and I essentially just scooped down a bunch of old leaves and debris, which was blocking the intake and then causing the rest of the gutter system to overflow and not really letting us harvest as much rainwater as we could. So we got up there in a little break in the weather and cleared out those gutters and that seems to have fixed the, the problem for now. There's a lot more work to do um, with the rest of the gutters around the house. This is the garage and as you can see, it's like not, it's missing, um, it's missing that down pole, which is also, you know, causing too much water to pool up here, which is not good for the foundation of this building. Um, and same goes on this side. That's missing. I think it used to go there. Um, and that's the sleep out. You can see that that also is broken. And so we're not collecting as much water as we could be. And I feel like getting all of these these gutters optimized and working again, it's gonna be a big project. It's gonna take a while, but it's important. So I think that's gonna be moving on up the priority list. I can tell you though, in this week that I've been here, it's pretty much just been like nonstop. Everything that we do, we find something else that needs to be done, but it's super fun. We're having such a good time and we're learning a lot about 
this home. We're learning a lot about the processes that are necessary to do upkeep. And while this place is not in tip-top shape yet, the goal is to work towards getting it there. What's happening there? This is the level we're at right now. <laughs> this little creature. <clears throat> I just, I needed to do the dishes, but it wanted to be held. And you're supposed to keep it warm and the fireplace isn't going right now. And it's freezing cold outside and raining. And um, so I made this little contraption <laughs> so that I can finish doing the dishes. <laughs> I think it quite likes it. It, snoo it was just snoozing a second ago. Very cute. Especially the little legs popped out the side. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you should patent that. <laughs> We've got two creatures that need to be looked at. Monka has an ear infection that comes and goes so often. It's been coming and going since we moved to New Zealand. And then our little lamb, Wolfson. He seems like he has like a little bit of an eye infection. We've only had him for four days or so, so we just want to get him looked at and then see if they can give us a solution for his eye. I think it's pretty common. I looked it up online for them to have little eye, like maybe pink eye or just an eye irritation, sometimes something with the, um, uh, their bottom lashes might be irritating them. So we're just going to, it's his other eye. We're just gonna get it looked at. It's just a bit watery and pink. So we're inside of the vet. I'm taking care of Lanka and Carrie is with Wilson and dealing with him. It's kind of funny, it's like at the same time, now we have two animals, both of them need a vet visit, but at least we can kind of divide and conquer. Yeah, Lanka, he's just been having skin problems. Skin problems are really difficult to diagnose exactly what is causing it, whether it's diet or it's contact. So this is the third time we've brought him in. Started with his paws, um, we dealt with that and it went away and then it came back and it's in his belly. And we dealt with that and it went away and now it's come back in his ear. We dealt with that and it went away and now it's back in the air again. So they're doing some tests, they're doing swabs, and hopefully we can find out exactly what's going on with causing, you know, this irritation for Lanka. This vet is far better than the last vet we were at. So update, I was editing this video and then all of a sudden our power went out and uh, we're in a really strong windstorm. <laughs> Holy shit. Our neighbor and he said that it's actually much more violent than he's ever seen and he's been here for 50 years. I guess so. they're called the equinoxal gales. Like, and they usually come in October, but they're not usually this strong. And it's the beginning of September, so they're early. But um, we don't have power, which means we have no internet, which means we have no electricity. And then we can't cook in the house because, you know, the oven and the stovetop are both electrical. So that means there's no hot water, there's no cooking ability in the house, and there's no power. But luckily we have our caravan, <laughs> trusty old caravan, which has a propane tank. So we've set that up because this little thing needs to eat. And we were, we were going down the road and we, yeah, we couldn't, we oh, couldn't yeah. get into town. I forgot. So we were gonna go and drive down the road to where we have cell service to call our power company uh, and there's like a gigantic pine tree 
that's blocked the road, fell, fallen over. So we turn around and drive the other way out and there's another <laughs> Tree, yeah, tree down. blocking the road. <laughs> um, my hat, love that hat, the tan hat that I bought recently, sucked right off the top of my head. And gone. And gone. Then we drove the other direction and met our neighbor, Alan, who's been here for 50 years. And um, he was saying that power's out at his house too. Um, he said he's caring for seven orphaned. Lambs. I'm like, oh, just one is enough work. Yeah. My goodness. This is where we've been storing our food because we don't have a refrigerator yet. So there is oh, one last beer left. It's supposed to be here any day now though. And perfect timing. If there's ever time for one last beer, it's, it's now, isn't We're it? We're sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wanting it to go up tomorrow, which is Saturday here in New Zealand. Um, but that's definitely not gonna happen because without power, we don't have internet, and therefore I can't upload a video. But um, it's been good, we're making the most of our time. Um, we do have firewood, we've got candles, we've got a flashlight, and in the caravan we have propane so we can cook. Now luckily, when I was walking down there, um, I met another neighbor, he had a chainsaw, so I offered to help him clear the road, but you know, it's gnarly outside right now. Like gale force winds and you really don't wanna be out there. Um, you wanna be inside warm and dry and safe from, you know, falling tree branches. So that's what we're doing. Um, once we get some more daylight tomorrow, I will show a bit more of the house as it is and what we're doing and what we plan to do. spots on the property this is our orchard and I downloaded an app that identifies trees and plants and we have about 30 plus fruit trees plums peaches apricots cherries apples crab apples um, the list goes on pears and this is a plum tree it's one of the first to flower in spring so uh, even though yesterday was a really intense storm it's cleared, it's nice and calm and sunny, and you can definitely feel that spring is in the air. The smell of this tree is just divine. One of the other things that's at the top of our to-do list is to repair this chicken coop, which is attached to the orchard, so they used to have chickens. Probably a afternoon of work and we can get that back into working order. And then we can get some chickens in there, so we have fresh, farm fresh eggs. This is the lower paddock of the property, and those are the uh, sheep, the rams, that escaped from our neighbor's property and let themselves in here when the gate was open during, uh, during the move out of the previous owners. And to be honest, we're okay with having them in there right now because they're keeping the grass nice and low because that's what they do. They're living, breathing lawnmowers. There is 
a magnolia tree out here as well, which is just starting to come into bloom. It's gonna be real beautiful, just a little one. And then yeah, so all that wood that fell down on the road yesterday, we went back and we collected a fair bit and we're gonna get a chainsaw and we'll chop this up and use this for firewood next season. So we also have a sleep out or a granny flat, which is essentially just a one bedroom structure. The outside is probably about 90% complete. The inside is maybe 75% complete. So that is on the to-do list, but it's not at the top of the to-do list. Obviously our priorities are getting the house in order first and foremost. We're kind of just taking every project stage by stage in order of importance. And if you've renovated a house before, if you have any tips for us, we're all ears. Please put them down in the comment section because um, this is all new for us and we're figuring things out as we go. But you know, I really love the community that we're creating here on this channel and all of the incredible advice from all of you viewers out there. So please make sure you share your advice down in the comment section. I'll be in there reading and responding and I really appreciate it. But one thing we do know how to do is grow food and garden and uh, there are six nice garden beds here. They've gone to weed, some of them have gone to weed. One of the first things we're gonna do soon is get in here and just clear out all the weeds and get planting so that we can have a nice summer harvest. Um, there is some kale that has survived. It's a good sign because the kale is in really good condition. You know, as you can see, there's really not any there's a couple of bites, but you know, it's an organic garden. That's what you get. But like, this is healthy, good kale. That is, you know, like a farm shed right now. The sheep go in there when it's raining or if it's windy. And on the far side, there is a firewood shed. It's pretty disorganized. And one of my goals this summer is to get in there and properly chop everything up and stack it because there's something super pleasing about a well-organized, well stacked, well stocked firewood shed. So this is the lower paddock um, and this is really essentially just gonna be a forest. All of these plants, like some are oak, there's some pine, linden trees, English oaks, manuka. These down here are poplars. They're great for soil retention, right? On the side of a creek and we have a creek here and so they help keep uh, the soil from eroding. So you have a nice little walkway along the perimeter of the property. And then here's our pond. Looks a little bit silty because we had big rains last night and there's a valley up there so it all kind of runs off down through here. There's a little dam here. And then that runs through a stream along the boundary down to a culvert and off of our property. So you can actually regulate drain the pond if you want to, to clear it out. And we probably are gonna do that this summer. But yeah, this you can just slide over and it'll drain out a lot more of the water. But this is just so beautiful down here. We also have a zip line which goes from over there by the house across the pond to this platform. Uh, haven't tried it yet. This week has been so full. Every day here has been 
lived to the max, waking up before the sunrise and going to bed early in the evening, right after the sun goes down, with full days spent outside, inside, working on projects. When we first found this property and found out that there was no cell service, it was kind of uh, a shock, to be honest. But now I look at it as a blessing of sorts. We're spending so much less time staring at our screens and so much more time outside living. And I think that's the beauty of this place. It's a reminder to get out and make the most of your time. All right, friends, well, it's the next day. And last night I came into this room and finished painting it. So we did two coats of primer paint and then two coats of eighth Spanish white. That's the color that we chose to go with. And we used this smaller third bedroom as the perfect place to kind of start and get a feel. And we really just love the way that this color came together. It's just this warm, inviting white. And that's exactly what we want for this house. But it feels good to uh, make headway and to complete a room. I still have all the drop cloths and the tape and stuff, but once I take that off, this, this room is done, which is amazing. So one down, two to go, and then also, you know, the kitchen and the living room, but hey, making progress. You know, this video is one that has been kind of cobbled together from a lot of different moments over the last week of moving in here. This video, there's been a lot of things that have happened and I'm doing my best to kind of just, you know, put it all into one story. So if you're here at the end of this video, a huge thank you. I know it's been a long one. Let me know in the comments what you think about this longer form vlog content. There's a lot to share right now. And you know, I'm doing my best to share as much of it as possible. So this has been such a journey already, such a learning process between getting these two orphan lambs, one of them passing away, and then doing our best to bring the survivor, Wilson, as we've named him, up to health, as well as, you know, balancing getting to work on the house. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you for making it to the end of this video. We will be sharing a lot more. I'm kind of really enjoying sharing this process of like transparently showing and telling what we're doing and the ups and the downs and the positives and the negatives of this whole journey of you know, learning, because that's what this is. This is a learning experience for us, and we're sharing it with all of you in the hopes that, you know, maybe what we go through and learn and share can help you along your way. And also, we're learning from you down there in the comment section. If you have advice, please put it down there. I love reading your comments. I love this uh, community that we're building, the conversations that we're having. A is Carrie's birthday, and I've planned a special evening out. We're going to a nice restaurant and maybe do a little wine tasting. So that's happening this evening. I think today during the day, we're gonna go outside, get in the garden and pull out all those weeds, try to get some, some crops in there because it is spring and it's the perfect time to plant. But yeah, you know, happy with how this came together and just really grateful for all of you out there. So thank you again for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to say, put it down there in the comment section. And if you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. If you are and you're feeling extra generous, there's the super like button there, which is a direct donation to my channel. Really appreciate those for all of you out there who have super liked videos before. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Okay, send in love.